friends too. We are sitting in with Ron Underwood from Nine Electric. What's going on, brother? I'm just hanging with you guys. <laughs> we're, the, we're at the Cotillion, baby. Interviewed you about a week ago, and for some reason, absolutely nothing recorded. <laughs> <laughs> uh, heartbroken. It was a good interview, it, man. It, it was really it, fun. You know what? It was the best interview in the world. Say that again. And nobody will ever <laughs> know. What went on? But we'll we'll try and recreate it today. After he was done, I asked him how the interview went, and he goes, "It was fucking great." No, it was yeah, really it good. Was, we, it we, was were, good. we were cracking up. We were having a good time. Oh. Well, you know that was just for us, so you know. exactly. It, we, we had to sit. You know, it's special. That's right. It was a romance. We'll we'll do the Cliff's notes of it for the for the general populace. That's right. Because they can't handle the coolness <laughs> of what went on on that phone call. So in 2015 was when we first saw you guys in Oklahoma City. You were with Gemini Syndrome. Didn't know what to expect. And as soon as you got up there, we were like, holy shit. That's, what, that's what, good to hear, what, man. What did we just walk into? <laughs> and, um, and it's really, really cool because it's kind of hard to describe your music. I mean, it, it's, it's rock, it's metal, it's punk. It's, it's a little bit of everything. How would you describe your music? Um, I mean, you, you got to kind of be general because you don't want to back yourself into a corner. Yeah. So we, we I guess the official statement is like hard rock with an electronic edge. Right. But yeah, you nailed it. It's it's all those things. And um, we, we are fans of all those types of music. And I think there's something to be extracted from any kind of music, if, whether it's like a production choice or you know what I mean? I Just totally a vibe. agree. Totally it, it, agree. But it's a matter of how you use it and juxtapose it against all of the other stuff you like. You yeah. know what I mean? And let it gel together. Yeah. How did you guys end up on the not so, what is this? The not so silent. Not, not, so, not so silent night I mean, tour. I mean, there's, I guess there's a million synchronicities as to why. It was just really timing, I guess. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we have the same manager as Drowning Pool. Okay, that's that's cool. one. Um, right. You know. Uh, I guess now, that's, do you that's guys do a lot of touring most... with Gemini Syndrome? Because the yeah, last two times I've yeah. seen you in Oklahoma City, you yeah, were with them it has times. been a handful of times okay. at this point. Yeah, okay. and I you mean, guys we, are from the same. Yeah, same we, area, we all came you? up in the LA, like the the okay. Sunset Strip yeah. scene right. and all that stuff. So, and actually, uh, one of the founders of Gemini Syndrome was in a band with Mikey and Micah. Oh, sweet! Um, so it's oh, you know okay. what I mean. It was like yeah. we we always kind of knew what was up with with those guys. Like yeah. very early on, we were kind of watching. As as they were they they were getting stuff done like in the early stages we were getting stuff done it was kind of like that neck and Good neck stuff. like like that healthy comp competitive a absolutely like, oh, absolutely we, we got to catch up yeah, to what they're stuff. up to that kind of stuff that's good. so that's and then awesome. um uh, yeah I mean they're these guys are so cool they're they're brothers <laughs> yeah. in fact right now um they're having trouble with their vehicles so like oh, half no. half the band is with with us oh. on on our RV right now cool. so okay. just cool. that kind of thing <laughs> so. On this tour, you're obviously playing a lot more vi uh, bigger venues than like the Thunder Alley in Oklahoma City. Yeah. yeah. Do you prefer bigger stages or more intimate settings? It's it's not a matter of like real preference. It's just a matter of they're they're just two different things. It's like you can't have pizza every night, even though it's my favorite show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I really don't have a preference. Like the the huge shows, obviously. Your job is pretty easy. Uh -huh. You could get a bunch of, you, you know, 20,000 drunk people riled up yeah. if, if you just say, you know, pretty easy, yeah. pea soup. Yeah! <laughs> I love pea soup. <laughs> so that's kind of cool because, you know, it's just easy. But that's, that's what it is, what it is. It's kind of impersonal. When you get to the smaller stages, and you get to, it feels like what we're doing right here, right. which is having a conversation. Right. And there's, no, they're there to see you. Yeah, they're yeah. They're not there to see one of the other 20 bands that could be on the bill that day. Yeah, so so it's a different thing, and there's there's something really cool and special yeah. about that. It's exclusive. You, you, you can get sick of one or the other, yeah. but... Yeah, I don't cool. know. There's cool. pros and cons to both. The big ones, you can draw in new fans that you've never heard of That's, before, but... That helps you with that kind of growth, yeah. but again, though... though 
the big festivals, it's kind of like the dabblers, you know, that, that's totally it's the agree. general public. Totally yeah. So, agree. so it helps you, it helps you branch out and do those crossover kind of crowds mm-hmm. where um, it's the people who wouldn't generally come to like a yeah. gritty CD club. Those are, you know, like you said, those, those are the real fans. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so how would your parents or your family members describe the music of Nine Electric? How would they describe it? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome, man. <laughs> uh, my, my family's so supportive. When, when, when we roll through Phoenix, it's like the entire crowd is... Their last name's Underwood. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. The guest list is like is like <laughs> Brett Underwood plus forty nine. <laughs> How funny! You know, like. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I, it goes both ways with them sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I ask that question, they're like, "Oh man, my mama warned me." Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? Like early on, they they were kind of freaked out. They didn't know what to do with me because uh-huh. all all my other siblings were like, um, you know sports stars and badasses in that way and i was just i just wasn't really interested i was really good (laughs) at athletics but just i could give a shit you know what i mean i wanted to do something creative that's just where my brain that's where my brain was fueled and so i was always painting and drawing and and um i I picked up guitar kind of like later on um but then i got into art school and, and branched out and they once they realized i was pretty serious and that it wasn't just like a a two month phase of me like wanting a guitar. Right. They, they were like, okay, like, you gotta figure out okay, well, that's what, cool. what, how he's best gonna find that deal. And what, once I got into art school, I didn't take any visual art. I just got along with the the music people. Uh huh. Because we, we called them art jocks. It was like they, these like elitist, douchey, <laughs> oh, this painting, you know, everyone has an opinion. It's like, <laughs> right? it's, it's your own self expression. Don't hate on someone. That's their deal, you know, yeah. it's their own path. Um, the musicians were all so cool. I only, I just ended up taking only music. Cool. Um, and then those guys, I formed a band straight out of high school, and all those guys are doing really well now. Um, so, yeah, it, it changed awesome. the course of my life. So what do you think you would be doing if you weren't in the music industry? Um, I would be doing visual art, like probably full on. And I actually I direct music videos for bands in L.A., and and actually a handful of bands like in Vegas lately too. So yeah, definitely. That's I'm cool. getting more now that the the music thing is a little more clockwork uh-huh. and it is, you know, just sailing. Yeah. Um and it, I have some time off the road. I'll just go shoot a bunch of music videos. But cool. that's I guess that's my my other that, that's, passion. That's really cool. This is a very strenuous uh tour. I mean, you guys what, 3 days off in the whole month. Yeah, I, it's I like that. Pretty intense. I, I was looking at that schedule and I was just like, "That's crazy." <laughs> I, I, yeah. Every single day, you guys are playing except for three out I, of the whole I month. I feel I feel the sense of accomplishment uh-huh. when that's happening. When you're on tour and you have like a three day break or something that's like crazy. that, and you're in a place where you don't really know anybody, or uh-huh. you know, you're it's like you're just spending yeah. money to be. You know, twiddling your thumbs and right. watching Goodfellas for the 59th time <laughs> with, with this guy. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> when no one's doing anything, I'm just like, why is everybody? I put on a movie. Hell yeah. 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 No, so yeah, we'll, we'll make it a movie day. Tarantino's, cool. Tarantino's a big pick. There you mm-hmm. go. Good choice. <laughs> Are you currently working on new material? We're always working on new material. And you ride on the road. We write, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of constant. <laughs> it's like we're always on the road, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, we're cool. all, you know, we, we all play instruments and we can all, like, pretty much record ourselves. Uh-huh. Uh, Micah actually is, like, a really proficient producer. Um, he's done the bulk of all of our recordings. Uh-huh. Um, oh, wow. If, cool. if not, like, a co-produce with another producer. Yeah, we're pretty self-sufficient with talent. that. Lots yeah. of talent. Yeah. Wow. So, How yeah, cut out the middleman, man. Yeah. You know? yeah. Or at least, you know what it is? You have a little more control. You have a little more say. Yep. When you have the technical side of things uh-huh. down, um, you have an idea. You can get it out the way that you envision it, you know? Cool. And it saves money. Yeah, and it's, uh, yeah, exactly. It saves money. How do you feel the band has evolved or grown since your Control EP in in, uh, 2014? Well, that's a a good example of where it was like self produced. Micah was the guy, the engineer, and, Uh you know, um, we had a friend of ours mixing it who's really good, Damien Renaud. 
Mm-hmm. This French guy. <laughs> Ooh, he's very French. <laughs> he says some really good <laughs> one-liners <laughs> that don't translate, but are even cooler because they don't. <laughs> I want to smell your titties. Like, what are you talking about, man? Oh, I didn't. I didn't mean it like this, but it sounds better when I. It's, it sounded like, okay. better in my head, you know. Wait, that's actually it's Jay and Silent Bob actually do say that, so I guess it does translate. Maybe I'm thinking of another thing he usually says, but it's pretty bad. Then on the 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 latest album, um, uh-huh. the, our first full length, that, that's uh, you know. Got signed to a record label. Woohoo! Right. Did that whole deal. So okay. um, we had a little money uh-huh. to, to spend on it. And we we teamed up with Kane Churko, who's done like Five Finger Death Punch. Uh, he's worked with Ozzy. Oh, sweet. He's worked with uh, In This Moment. Like a bunch of people who were, uh, we, we love the sound of their albums. We love, you know, what they were doing. Um, and he's, he's just a whiz. He's, he's one of those guys, uh, usually. I, I, in the past, I've worked with a lot of producers who were either songwriters, but not really hands-on engineers, uh-huh. or the other side right. of it, where they were really good engineers and could get this killer current sound, but didn't really have any input on the songwriting. He's got all of it Sweet. going on, and he he just he'd say, "What if we repeated this part one more time?" And then it's just you know ten that times better that somehow. You know right what I mean? There. You just feel like yeah. something's missing. Cool. Yeah. He just had that knack. Cool. And it, it being that he was such a a good engineer, it was just like that that immediate gratification good. of hearing good. the idea back. It was so, something really cool good. too. So, what's your favorite song to do live? What do you get? The what's best the favorite song? The of? best response. The best response is before we even do this song. I uh-huh. think, um, well, Time Bomb is like a yeah. live favorite. Everyone's, <laughs> if you've never heard it before, yeah. it's just, We've it's, heard it. it's got that least common denominator, like knuckle dragging kind of pounding yeah. beat. And yeah. it's a, this song's about blowing some shit up. <laughs> and everyone goes crazy. But, um, and then, like let's see. <laughs> good, good. <Peace> up. <laughs> You're going to hear it tonight, I yeah, promise you. Yeah, yeah. He, what did he say? <laughs> I don't care. It's awesome. That's what it is. We're here. That's, what it, that's all that matters. They're there. We made it. Had some beers. Um, mm-hmm. And then um, Goodbye. Is a, is a good one. Okay, cool. It's it's yeah. more it's much more subdued and and simple in a lot of ways, like three chords and it's pretty open. Uh-huh. But um, it it hits people in a different way. It's a little more emotional, gotcha. I guess. But the introduction for that is pretty rad, as I say. This yeah. one's about killing your ex, <laughs> and I, everyone can relate to that, you know. And the crowd goes like, crazy. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna do that. She sucks. And he beats you. <laughs> he he understands, man. He gets, he gets and us. I do. Yeah. I understand you, man. <laughs> That's good stuff, man. Uh, oh, I love How it. How has feedback been for the new album? It's good. it's been really good. Like I, I, like I was it. just saying earlier, like it's every interview I've done has been really good. You know, like uh-huh. phone in, phone in or in person. Everyone's got like, and you you could tell when someone's kind of like, oh, I didn't listen to it, but mm-hmm. it's great. You know what yeah. I mean? It, yeah. It hasn't been that way on this album. It's it's been very specific things that people will mention, and it's not it's not completely consistent. Like someone will like this thing or that thing about it, but mm-hmm. everyone has a little bit of something to say. Yeah. It's got something for everyone, kids. That's absolutely. No, um, but like even like we did a bunch of these, um, a bunch of these metal magazines in Europe because of our involvement with um, the Century Media uh-huh. Group. Yeah, they they serviced all these these metal magazines. Mm-hmm. Hey, check this out. Give it a review. Yeah, and they do like uber you know like black metal usually or, you know what i mean yeah. and it's like this like danish review like well it is not metal but i it's, uh, but no one has like a really bad thing to say about it they're like cool. i feel like this is well crafted you know what yeah. i mean like yeah. they can't even like make fun of it which it's like pretty good i feel like so even people who wouldn't who are reluctant to be into it are kind of like Ah, these guys are all right. Like so, and that's it, it, in, it is, yeah. It, and that's the that's how we feel live too. I think people who are ready to hate us, maybe we don't look as tough as they want us to look, yeah. or something like that. And we slay them, and they're like, "I'm gonna get these guys albums." It happened last night, actually. <laughs> like an uber tough guy was like, "I thought y'all were sissies." <laughs> 
<laughs> Y'all weren't sissies at all, man. <laughs> it's really cool. A true story. Just out here in the parking lot, uh, she yeah. she checked us in. Said we are at Drowning Pool, Nine Electric, and all that. And one of one of our friends uh, was like, "I just checked out. I just found Nine Electric last night." What did he say on Facebook? Or? No, he said I found him. I checked him out last night, and I said, "Where?" I thought maybe he had seen you guys. He said on Google Play, and I bought their album. So that's that's a pretty yeah. big deal, yeah. like yeah. a he random like, purchase. It was really yeah. random. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. really good. Out of nowhere, he's like Nine Electric. Well, I know those guys, and I bought their album last night. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> I think we did something really cool with the album. We kept it simple. We cut out a lot of the the fat and the filler and. We just we Good. just went for something. It might not be exactly one genre or another t- to most people's mind, but it's really congruent within itself. You know, it's definitely a mm-hmm. thing that it is. Right. So I feel really happy about that. Cool. And it'll draw more people that way. People. Yeah. Like a little bit. You know. It's consistent. Since, yeah. They they know what. It's not. It doesn't just fit into that one little niche. And... Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm so happy with it. I'm so the first stoked. time we ever saw you guys, it was so funny because you said sissies and all that stuff. That was not our first thought. You yeah. jumped up on stage, I tapped him. You you might hate me for this. <laughs> I said he could be Billy Idol's son. I love Billy Dude, Idol. The energy okay, was just I love intense. Billy Idol. The that energy was just everybody was it was just like these guys are just, you could just feel it coming and off you of you. Like it was just like. I mean, but was, there, a few years ago, I was, um, when my I former band had broken up and I was kind of in between stuff. <laughs> yeah. I was I was driving a forklift at a liquor distributor <laughs> and I was hiding out. I was still hearing my old band song on the radio. It was like some weird Twilight Zone <laughs> oh, thing. Wow. And um, I got an email. Apparently, like there's a, a common friend of Steve Stevens and me. Uh-huh. Um, showed him some of my my old band's videos or something like that and I got a, a random email I don't even know how he got my email that, that's weird hey Ron I, I checked you out and I liked your stuff what are you up to he was trying to put together some in between band when he wasn't on uh-huh. tour with Billy Idol and I was oh, like this wow. is the craziest <laughs> random, like an email you know I thought, I thought it'd be like you know something about dick pills or something you know what I mean it's like I don't recognize this name you know <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it's, wow. it was it was awesome. That's really um, cool. So that it, it was a, uh, and that's at a point when I was kind of once bitten, twice shy. I spent like ten years with this uh-huh. other band, and we built, 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 and then at our height we broke up, right. and then so it was all these little hints of you need to get back into music. Nice. Yeah. And um, that was definitely one of those pats on the back. Like, all right, cool, keep, cool. And then soon, soon thereafter, I got a call from my lawyer from that former band uh-huh. and he was Mikey and Micah's former former band's lawyer also oh, okay. mm-hmm. and he had them on the phone with him and he's like hey I got I got some boys here who want to talk to you <laughs> they're interested in working with you and and after talking to them I knew they were serious and I was I was ready to get back on it killer killer the rest is history yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so do you guys have any pre-show superstitions or processes that you go through before a show um well he was just th- that's what yeah, reminded me yeah <laughs> gotta, gotta get a little food i mean the, the obvious the obvious stuff i don't think any of us are like terribly superstitious about anything but um definitely if I, I, we don't like to be rushed i think uh-huh. that's the, the worst thing you know we show up to a place late i hate that right oh, yeah. Yeah, get our gear up there is it working um no, I don't know. I, I think that the best thing for me is to like zone out and actually like if I'm in the crowd before the show, just like talking to people and stuff and cool. like just like not thinking about the performance whatsoever. Nice. That's that's probably the best way to like it's the Zen way. You know what yeah. I mean? When yeah. you when you think about it, then you lose the whole Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, that's all I've got. Thank you so much. Ah, um, thanks for having cannot me. Cannot wait to see you guys. This will be her third time, my second time. My first. Her first time. So, <laughs> right on. Um, we, we're Four hours totally drove. excited about Four this. Hours she At, well, six hours. Yeah. Time <laughs> she, dang. She, six hey, hour drive to come and see you. Troopers. Five hours to come to this place. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, a, six, it's a big deal here. <laughs> I, I, like I was we telling didn't talk you. About okay, the, so, yes. so uh, I was on tour. Oh, yeah. my, my former band was called Opiate for the Masses. Uh-huh. And actually, Casey DC, our bass player, uh-huh. I met him on tour with Drowning Pool on this on this tour that I'm talking about. Uh-huh. 
Um, and he was in a band called Dry Kill Logic from the East Coast. And we just, we got along like right off the bat. And um, so we played this great show here at the Cotillion. I remember there was, there was a, a truck stop and I got this uh, lip balm called Chicken Poop. <laughs> You've seen it? Is it still I around? Yeah, I watched it. It was good. It's good. Oh, they've branched out. This was like, I could tell this was just some mega local shit at the time. I was like, chicken poop? Hell yeah, I have to get that. So I buy this chicken poop. Winning Kansas. And we roll, up, we roll up to the venue, and I'm like, this venue's awesome. It was like, you know, just off the hook. And I remember, I think at the end of the show, at the very finale, I like ripped my pants off. And my boxers came with them. Right? So, um... And I was wearing kind of like this army tunic that just hung just low enough. So I was like, okay, that's cool. So I'm like taking pictures with fans with like literally no pants oh on. God. Like like some <laughs> some sh- uh, kind, kind, kind of like a, a kilts, uh, kilts man. I just, yeah, I, I was yeah. trying to justify it to myself. Like, oh man, I'm, I'm part Scottish. It's all good. Um, and then so... I'm like, I, I'm, I'm getting a little more rowdy as the night goes on with that whole get up still. <laughs> and, um, and the back was way ripped up to the top. So oh, no. I, if I went out the wrong way, it was kind of like I was at the doctor's right. office. You know. Anyways, so, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go mess with drowning pool. So I just, <laughs> I, I guess I left my jacket on some equipment and I was just butt naked. And I just started running through the whole place. <laughs> And I run onto Drowning Pool's bus, and I I was like, I don't give a shit who's on there right now. And I remember hopping on the table, and I think CJ was sitting down. <laughs> and he was trying to do something, or maybe he was, like, pouring a drink. I don't know what he was doing. But I was just, like, like doing a lap dance, like, horrible shit. I was just, like, testing his patience at that point, because I was like, nobody stopped me. No security. There's a naked guy. And, um, yeah. No, I don't know. That's real. Cool. So that was the beginning of a long a long stretch of streaking pranks, I think. Cool. Yeah. Nice intro yeah. to the uh, cotillion in yeah. Wichita, Yeah, so this Kansas. is a good, a good memory here. Good stuff. It was a good time. I was breaking out. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> He'll wear himself out. Yeah, it was a good time. So tonight, maybe some more of that. No, no. no. <laughs> Don't want to bum you out or nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. See, it's fair game. <laughs> There's different rules. When you know you're going to leave town in like s- several hours. Very like you, I, there, Very there was There point. was another time. I remember being in Nashville, Tennessee, and I was hanging out with some some of these really cool local chicks. They were They were just really just like down to earth and fun and i was like man i gotta pee and i go by this dumpster i was outdoors and i was right by the main road Uh and i was just like taking a long beer pee you know what i mean (laughs) a bud light pee (laughs) and and it's like going for like ever and there's nowhere near being done and all of a sudden cop car rolls up oh, and i'm like shit. in the spotlight you know those swivel oh, yeah. spotlights oh, they yeah, have in there and he turns the flip <laughs> they do the little woo, woo, just a little hey we see you yeah. and i turn and i'm like should i stop and i'm like there's no stop in this stop i'm already that. caught this is clear <laughs> and they go oh, on the speaker hey did you play tonight <laughs> and they go yeah and they go Awesome show, and they just roll off. That is hilarious. <laughs> I was like, that's I was thinking, I was like thinking, how much is a ticket? You know, oh, like going to get public indecency. Now, yeah, in, now I'm going to be at the register. <laughs> they were at the show, dude. They were at the show. Oh, Indecent exposure. Funny. I was like, registered is, as a sex offender. I was like, offender. I love Nashville, it's man. Just a shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, good times. I love your tattoo. Uh, it's my last name, Underwood. But I like that too. But I also oh, like your mustache. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, how cool. That's, that's an oldie. That that one's <laughs> a, a tour story. You know, oh. I got poop on my lip too. Oh. <laughs> that, that was at a house party, Tra- Traverse City, Michigan, baby. Did that hurt like hell? It wasn't bad, but you know, Bud Light. Yeah, it, I don't yeah, know. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. No, it, 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 it was not bad. It was, uh, there's not a lot of pain receptors there because you're always biting it anyway. Yeah. yeah. I can see got that. poop on my lip, kids. <laughs> it's still there. That was that was on tour with Drowning Pool too, and I think oh I think that CJ was at that house party. He doesn't quite remember, which is rightfully so, because right. I 
probably wouldn't have remembered it without the tattoo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's proof. Oh, that's oh awesome. Goodness. That's oh, awesome. Wow. Cool. Well, thank you guys very much thank for putting you, up dude. with us. Yeah. Uh, can't wait to see you. Um, I, I know what to expect, and I'm, I hope she... I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited, too. Thank you, guys. Thank you.